Hello, everybody. I'm Brandi Chastain. I am one of the four founders of Bay FC, also co-owner. You you know me, whether you're from here or you're in women's soccer, whether it's California, the, the United States or around the world. We're, I, I'm your local soccer fanatic. And with me today, we have our general manager from Bay FC, Lucy Rushton. Lucy, you're in England right now, so it's about 8.30ish or 9 o'clock. How many pints are you in so far? <laughs> I stopped drinking many years ago. I stopped drinking uh, many years ago, so uh, I'm, I'm good at the moment. I'm on my eighth pint of water for the day. Uh, okay. But yeah, it's 8.30 awesome. at night here, so we've, well, we've had a day, and I can see the sun shining in the background where you are, and it's making me jealous. Well, that's through a few um, intermittent showers, but still nonetheless there's some sun peeking through we are really super grateful to everybody who's joined on this um on this zoom to talk about bay fc to talk about what's been happening what, behind the scenes what's been happening in the drafts what's been happening in the trades and lucy's going to help us to understand where we are what's happening and what we're going to see come 2024 march and so again Fans, thank you very much for all your support. We are making history and you are a part of it. So let's get um, right to it, Lucy, if you don't mind. Let's go. All good? All good? Okay. So what's your logistical process of creating a team from, as from scratch? Wait, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on. Have you ever created a team from scratch? And you've said that you have a strategy what is it? And tell us about what this process has been like. Okay, good questions. Um, so yes, I have done it before um, with Atlanta United in MLS. Um, so um, I was part of their expansion build team in 2016. So the year before we came into the league in 2017, I was I was there of, uh, as head of technical recruitment. So um, it was very much about putting the team together. So thank God I had that experience because it has helped me a lot in this one. Um, our strategy really for building a roster, and I'll be honest, it it, it fluctuates and it changes based on based on current situations, based on how receptive NWSL teams have been to helping us or not helping us, helping us or not helping us. You don't expect help from anybody, but um, it's it's changed somewhat and it's ebbed and flowed at times, but the, con the kind of core components of it have stayed the same. Um, I think we always wanted, and I think first and foremost, when you're building a roster, you need to put a kind of flag in the mass, in the ground quite early um, because getting that first player is really important because the jigsaw puzzle is so big. And when you're trying to recruit a whole team, there's always, well, if this player, then this player and this player, and it impacts this. Side. So actually getting that first piece of the jigsaw is really important. Um, and that's why we moved on, on Alex when we did, um, because it was really important for us to get a, a player of her quality and someone that we really think is going to be a fundamental piece of our roster early on, because then suddenly that then, impacts many other decisions maybe it rules a ton of players out maybe it rules a ton of players in but it gives you a decision and it gives you something then to to work off of so getting her in when we did and signing her was was really important to us um i think the spine of the team for expansion has been incredibly important to us and i've spoken to that uh about that a lot um obviously like goalkeeper center back a good solid center midfielder and a striker um, when I say the spine of the team are, are really important and we've we've targeted those. Um, there's some we've missed on, um, there's some we've got, there's some that we are still working on um, and we're quite comfortable at the moment with where the roster is. And I should say that from the start. At the moment, as the roster stands today, really happy with, with where we are. Um, we kind of split the roster into buckets and different mechanisms through which we could acquire players. So draft, so expansion draft, college draft, um, NWSL trades and international players. And now having lived through the draft and gotten through that, we are where we want to be in terms of the numbers and the breakdowns of the players from, from each of those mechanisms. So the strategy has been very much to, to work on the spine of the team, um, to get players in there, have a, have a blend of youth, but experience as well. I think NWSL experience is really important. Emily Menges is an incredible signing to us for that reason. 
I think having an experienced centre back was really important for us. So she's she, acquiring her was 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 great for us. Um, and then looking to bring in talent where you can from abroad. I think being able to bring in some young talent um, from internationally is 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 going to excite our fans and and bring a freshness to the league and to the club as well. Um, so we're really excited about doing that. Um, the one thing I will say, I mentioned those buckets and. From experience, I think what you need to be is not excellent in one bucket and then average in the others. You need to be very good across every bucket. Um, so you can't just perform well in the expansion draft and then not have good solid internationals or vice versa. You need to make sure that in each of those buckets, you have very good players and not excellent players from one and average in the other. So that's been a big part of our thinking and strategy as well. So you, you've used the word quality a few times and you, you you said that about Alex you said that about Emily uh what are those qualities that were leading the decisions to player choices mm -hmm. um I think it's different for every player um so for, uh, as I said with Emily like I mean just the fact that she her experience is a quality um, that we look for and we were particularly looking for in a centre back somebody that's a master uh, a, a high number of games as she has um, she's been a winner she's been a champion um, and that to us bringing a champion into the locker room is really important but when we talk about her as a centre back her ability to actually play out from the back is really good I don't think she gets enough credit for how good she is on the ball and, and her capabilities to play out we always knew we needed at least one, but preferably two centre backs who are excellent at playing out because otherwise our game model doesn't work, right? Because we want to be a, a possession based team and that means playing out from the back. So, really, with Emily to have a player of her ability and quality on the ball to be able to play out was a was a really important quality to us. Um, the same I'd say for Al Alex, actually. Um, as a midfielder, we want to play through the midfield. So you need to have midfielders who can manage and handle the ball under pressure and make and have a good pass range. So those were some of the things that stood out with Alex when I talk about qualities. But another one of hers, which you get with some players and not others, is versatility. Um, I think whenever you're you're building a, a team, whether it's an expansion team or just a, an established team, you need to have players who are capable of playing multiple positions. And that was a quality with her that we really liked. Um, if I think about someone like Caprice, um, her qualities and, and and I guess is a general one actually when I talk about qualities is positional profiles so for every position we have a subjective and an objective positional profile subjective being like what we say what we think we want so okay we want them to be very attack minded we want them to be able to play forwards and get into and join the attack and be a good crosser of the ball so those are all kind of like the the subjective thoughts that we have about players and positions the objective profiles are then data driven. So they're the data versions of those subjective opinions. So when we talk about quality, we look at how does a player actually fit our quality subjectively in the areas that we identify for each position and how do they fit objectively, i.e. through the data? What does this, what does the data we have say on them? Um, so that's probably a more general one. And then say for, for Caprice in, in particular, the qualities that we look for in our positional fullback of a profile um, are really that ability to get up and down, to play in the final third, to play inside, um, which means that you're not they're not just staying wide on the touch lines, but actually able to to invert and connect in, in in with midfield, but to have quality in the final third as well. So the ability to cross, the ability to find teammates with pullbacks, um, and those were areas that she really excelled in, subjectively and objectively. So that's probably a nice example of it. Got it. Um... I was going my my follow up or my second part to the you know quality and this was style and data and technology. So um, if if there's anything else you can give us in the data and technology like specifics things that you look at you know give the fan an insight to okay you look at some numbers what do they mean and how does it translate to actual uh, manifestation on the field because you know the data that you're going to be getting um will be with a a different team with different players with a, yep. a different coach and so how do you translate those things into a new environment that that's i mean say 
for those who don't know, my my background is very much is is in data and analytics, and that has been something which forever is something that data and analysis hasn't been able to do is predict player performance when you take them out of situation A and put them in situation B. Now, the hardest players for that to do are players that you'll bring in from a different league. At least if you're bringing them from NWSL, there's a continuity in terms of the, the opponents they're up against once they're executing those actions and so where the data's come from. When you talk about international players who have come from an international league, it's completely, it's something that we just can't, we can't predict and we can't use data to to accurately say, okay, a 83% pass success rate in the WSL in England is going to equate to a 75% success rate in NWSL in England, um, in America. So for us, it's how we use data is very much about we use it two or three ways. One, to identify players at the start of our process. Um, and that really is to say, right, there's there's thousands of, of left backs in the world. So how do we whittle that down actually to a manageable number for us to go and watch? That's where I'm going to we... disagree. There's very few left backs, true left backs in the world. <laughs> yeah, they're converted left backs. They were left wingers. They were left <laughs> wingers um, or, or defensive midfielders who got converted. Um, mm. But yeah, we'll, we'll use it there to, to really whittle down those players to actually allow us to go and watch them subjectively because obviously we can't watch thousands of left backs to find one um at that point the subjective comes in and we go ugh the profile isn't quite showing us what we need so how do we tweak the data to now give us more players of what we need um so there's always a back and forth between data objective and subjective um but for me that da data its use is is and its best use is to ask questions. So the data can never give you the answers a lot of time. It can tell you numbers and as to your point, it can can give you graphics, but it can't give you real detail of context, of situation, of teammates around them. And so we always use it to ask us questions um, and give us more things that we need to go and find out about the player. Um, obviously when we get later in the process and we use data there to, to either confirm or, or go against our subjective opinion, that's when it becomes really, for me, really invaluable because it does when, when you're watching players, you build up an emotion to that player, whether positive or negative, when you watch them, if you, if you love them, then you, be you become, you have a bias about you want to see their best bits because you've fallen in love with this player. And the more time you invest in them, the more you want it to work. And so you have this weird bias of, of you have to catch yourself because you have this weird bias of going, okay, I've just watched five really poor crosses, but there'll be another good one in a minute. And I'll remember the good one. Like, and it's real, it, it happens and you have to catch yeah. yourself. And that's where data can pull you back in. And you can go into a meeting and say, oh, she, yeah, but she, her, cross, her crosses are fantastic. Well, actually, the data says that our cross success rate is 36%. So where's the disparity? Okay, now I need to go and watch in isolation all of our crosses, and as a group, we'll discuss it. And that's where other people come in and maybe highlight the your biases are there. So, and that works on the negative as well. You can become real, no, I don't like her. No, I'm not don't don't like her. And then the data can say, yeah, but she's actually performs really well in metrics XYZ, which we have said are important. That's that's Z for all of you fans out there. Z. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, that's my. You know what? Normally, when in America, I say Z now as well. So, <laughs> like, I'm surprised at myself that I've just said Z. That's what one day back in England does to me. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so we'll use it that way to then go. Okay, well, I've said that she's not very good in these areas, but the data suggests otherwise. I need to go and watch all of those isolated incidents. So, for us, it always is used to. To, to to make us ask questions and make sure that our subjective isn't being tricked by the the biases that you always naturally form when watching anybody. Yeah, I think that there, there's a significant need for balance between subjective and objective because, you know, as a footballer and as a, a fan of the game for, you know, 50 years and as a co former coach, um, you know, I look at players all the time and I'm not looking at them sometimes as I'm going to the game, let's say as a fan, but then mm -hmm. I see something and I'm like, Ooh, I really like that. And yeah. here's why I like it. Or, Oh, that, uh, 
that is going to get you in trouble all the time. That's not going to be good. And so I, I feel like there's a, a true need to have that mechanism, as you, you said, to test and challenge your, your bias. Um, yeah. But there, but, the, but, but I the believe eye, also that the eye test. Yeah. Nothing the eye test. We always come back to that. And, and it, it, and you just highlighted a good point with data in that it's not specific to Albertine's style of play. The, the yeah. data they've got is in a system and in a team that is playing a certain way. That could be the yeah. way that we want to play. It might not be. And so always what we're looking for is how do they fit with how we want to play? How do they fit with how Albertine specifically sees their role being in the team? And a lot of the time that comes more from the subjective. Um, but also you can just take the context, the context of the game, the scoreline at the time, the weather conditions, like everything mm -hmm. that the fact that they're down to 10 men, like all of these things that impact performance are where you can get more from the subjective. But I mean, it's a really fine line and it's you have to balance it. But the the data is is so important to us as well. Um, yeah. So it's um it's a it's a it's a good balance and look we're really lucky that we have a data and analytics department we have um we have Ariel who is our is our director of, of data and analysis and she is incredible um incredibly intelligent knows that knows NWSL and women's football inside out um, can you give the fans her background just so they know yeah, so a few people will know Arielle because um, because she was on Twitter and she was actually doing a lot of NWSL data on Twitter um, and putting out data for free for, for clubs, for fans, anyone who is interested. And so you can see her quality. If you look her up, um, Arielle Draw is her name. You'll see, you'll see all of her history and what she's done in NWSL and you can see her quality straight away. Um, but she also worked with a company called Zealous as well before us, which... Um, they work with um, with a high a number of high profile teams in the men's game to provide data analysis to them in their scouting and recruitment processes. So um, very lucky to have snapped her. Um, she's fantastic, um, and say she really helps us and, and drives us in our decision making and in our thought processes. So there are very few NWSL clubs that have that person, and so I think for us when we talk about as a club, we really. It's really important to us that we're setting new standards. I think we speak about that a lot. Um, and that is obviously on the pitch and what we want to do there. And we've spoken about how we want to play a different brand of football in NWSL, but it's also off the pitch. It's also about those things like how we use data and analytics, what our scouting department looks like. Say again, I think there are there are a number of NWSL teams that don't have an established scouting department. Um, so we brought Austin Buchanan in. Um, he was at Racing Louisville before, um, and he is now heading up our, our scouting department. And again, it's something where we are, he's incredible. His knowledge of, of, of women's football is incredible. And so we're trying to set new standards for how we do those things. It's medical and performance. It's, it's how we actually look after our players and, and treat them off the pitch. Um, these are all areas that we're trying to, to I guess, develop in and, and set new standards and precedents in NWSL and in, in women's football for, for how we operate. So data and, anal and analysis is one of those. And say throughout the club, it's something that, that we're consistently trying to do. Excellent. So this conversation now for me is like the dominoes are starting to fall for, for new questions. And I have so many, I'm going to try and put them into kind of what, would seem like in, in, in a harmonious way. So we we've, we've got Alex, who's you know can be a, a six or a center back. We've got Caprice, who's an outside back. We've got Joelle Anderson, who's an attacking midfield type. We've got Scarlett Cambaris, who can get in behind. She's creative. She's a forward player. We've got Emily Mangus, as you said, is a central uh, defender, and we've got Dorian Bailey. Those are the first six players that we that we brought to our team and now we've added with uh, the expansion draft we've added Alyssa Melanson Tess Bodie who by the way in case you didn't know I coached Tess Bodie as a youth player as a regional a regional team I've always loved Tess for many reasons and all our fans are going to love Tess because She's a tremendous human. Not that all, all these other players aren't, but I'm really excited about Tess as a person coming to our team. Um, 
And of course, as a footballer, because I think as Albertine may have said in the post draft um, presser talking about, you know, she's, she, she feels the game. She kind of flows in between the game. She understands it, the nuances, the, the, you know, the way she aligns herself in spaces and either next to players away from players, you know, pulling players out of shape, you know, she, she can do that with and without the ball. So that's a, that's a exciting, uh, Caitlin Rowland and Rachel Hill. So now we've got this collective. We've got you a team said, there. We've got a you team. You're happy with you're happy with these numbers. Um, now you've talked about you've talked about a few things that I want to get to, but I want to see if you can give us some insight into maybe where people might be coming from. You probably you know, we'll see. You've talked about a different brand of football. You've talked about a game model, and you've talked about trends. And, but we haven't really dug into those things. And I think those for, for the fan, is they're going to be critical, right? How, what are we going to show up? When we show up, what are we going to see? And what will it look like? So let's, let's talk about this concept of a different brand of football. And um, let's beat up that, that notion, because I think everybody's saying that right now, right? We want to play a different brand. We want to play possession style. And how are we going to get there? Well done with question to attack first there. So um okay, so so who are we gonna be? Um I think Albertine spoke about this as well on, on the press after the expansion draft. First and foremost, we want to be a team that that entertains. Um I think every team says that and, and you know has a different way of getting to it. Um how we entertain, we call it the beautiful game. So when and I and when I speak to players, I tell them that I say one word to them, Barcelona. I say I don't need to I don't need to say anything more to you about how we want our style of play to develop and how we want to be and the legacy that we want to create other than saying that we want to we want to be like Barcelona. Um that is the brand of football when for those who don't know Barcelona or watch Barcelona it's about complete control of the game through having the ball. I think Albertine said on TV the other day that he doesn't want to defend. He doesn't like defend. He, ne he never liked defending as a player, so he doesn't want to defend. And how <laughs> he definitely, not... he definitely did not. I've known yeah. him since a long time ago. Yes, that was and, not... and yeah. how do you not defend? You have the ball. So um, we want to control games with the ball. Um, now that doesn't mean slow, boring. Just pass it across the, the back line for thirty passes and then let's go forward. We're very intent on playing a a progression game where you advance up the field quickly when you can, um, but also a game which recognizes moments to play um, and moments not to. So yes, we want to control the ball and we want to dictate the game through our movement um, and through keeping possession of the ball. And by movement, I mean finding spaces or moving into spaces to manipulate your opponents to create spaces for someone else. So it's not necessarily about moving to the receive the ball, it can be about moving to create for others. Of course, we want to do that. We want to play through the midfield rather than going over the top all the time. But the most important thing to us is that we recognize the moments to do that. And we recognize the moments when we need to maybe go a bit more direct and we need to play in behind a little bit more. And that's why we have players like Scarlett Camberos and Rachel Hill, because they're able to execute in those moments, but they're also able to come in field and play as connectors. That's really important to us um, because, again, in those moments and times when we're playing through the midfield, we want to be able to use them. Um, so when we talk about style of play and look, we want to create we want to create chances. We want to score goals. We want to create chances. We want to do something which, which excites our fans and gets people on the edge of their seats. Like these are all things that, that we are very comfortable and confident knowing that we can do through a good possession based system. But don't get me wrong, it's not possession for possession's sake, it's possession with a purpose. Um, how do we get there? Um, um, I'm not over in Europe unnecessarily for Christmas. Um, let's say that. Um, my family live here. Um, I wish I was coming here for a holiday. It's not quite the case. Um, so a lot of our a lot of our recruitment now is being based internationally. Um, we've been working on that for the last three or four months, obviously with the, the draft and where that was, we needed to, to maybe prioritize that. Now that's done. 
the focus really shifts to, to, to the international players that we've identified and that we've had some discussions with um, and can now kind of kick on with those processes. So um, you could be seeing me in, in England, in France, in Italy, in Spain, in Denmark, any of these countries over the next month um, as, we, as we now try to fill in the rest of this roster and, and bring in those pieces. And look, international spots are a premium in NWSL. Um, you only get five of them. So for us, um, you can you can buy more, of course. Um, but so for us, when we talk about international players, we're talking about bringing in top quality players because they're a premium. Um, and so if they're coming to your team, you need to really strongly believe that they can have a really big impact. So um, we have some really exciting players that we're looking to bring in from abroad. Um, and obviously preseason starts January 22nd. So um, we want to have them here ready for preseason if possible. Okay, no, I, I want to, I'm really glad that you like to beat up the process and ask questions and answer questions and, you know, look at how we can see things differently. So I'm going to say something that hopefully will get us having a conversation about how we're going to do what you just said, because let's be honest, NWSL is not known for doing what you just talked about. You know, that's not... Yeah, um, <laughs> but 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 I think people talk about it yes, and, and they talk about it. And so the talk and the actions don't always meet together. And and, you know, how how do we manage a season where, let's be honest, this is professional sports. Wins and losses are premium um, wins, obviously being more premium than, you know, getting points, um, making the playoffs, going for the 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 shield and winning a championship. Those are obviously as an expansion team, most of the time people aren't like, Hey, you should be going for that. But I feel like that's our intention. hundred yeah. percent. We are totally committed to that brand of football. Um, and it's because we're here to, to create a legacy. Um, it's here because we we are here to do things differently. Um, we want to show NWSL that we have the talent in America and Actually, if you ask that talent to play football and play it in the right way, they can be even better than what they're showing to be. Um, we're committed to, to that brand. As I said, we we want Bay FC in 10 years' time. The way that people say Barcelona and you know, bang, you know what it means. We want people to be able to do that with Bay. Bay FC, bang. No, okay, know the style of play, know the play. And, I, and yes, that takes time. Is it easier for us maybe just to jump in and do something which is more direct and more in your face and nitty-gritty? Yeah, probably like, but it's not what we want to be as a football club. And so for us, we have to think about the long term and not the short term. We want to be successful in year one. I'll tell I, like all of us, we're, we're here, we come to work every day because we're competitors and we want to win. But we also have to keep in mind the legacy that we want to create for this club. And to do that on day one is so important because that's when you get the opportunity to buy all of your players from scratch. So Three years time, we're going to have a roster. And if I now buy players that I think are impactful at playing a more direct style, because, okay, we need to ease into it in years one and two and three, well, suddenly we've got a load of players on our roster that in years two and three, when we're trying to develop into that style more, aren't capable of playing that way. And they're on contracts for another two years, which are then hard to, to turn over. So turning over a roster is much more difficult than setting one up from scratch. Um you you are Chicago. You are Chicago at the moment, like the difficulties that they probably have in in now changing their roster. Um, so for us to do it from day one and to set a precedent and to go, this is the legacy that we want to create and we want to be different and we dare to be different. Like we see that as a challenge, but it's a challenge that we want because it's what is is right for the long term of the club. So then let's let's just talk about that as it relates to um, the players that we selected in the expansion in the expansion draft. Mm -hmm. Give us some of the insights like you did with Alex and Emily and Caprice and, you know, tell us their their special qualities and the nuances that you felt that they br would bring to the structure uh, of our team. Yeah, sure. Like, okay, so start with Caitlin. So Caitlin is is a really experienced goalkeeper in this league. 
fundamental for an expansion team, I think, to have leadership and somebody with that experience out the back. Um, she has an ability to play as well, which is, again, being able to play out from the back as a goalkeeper is really important when you, when you want to play that brand of football. North Carolina was a really good club for us, um, in all honesty, because out of everybody in NWSL, we felt that they were the club that most aligned with our brand of football and style of play. So for us, Caitlin, for that reason, and she's a she's a top goalkeeper. Some of the saves she makes are top. So um, that for Caitlin, but also that for Tess. Tess um, has been schooled in a way that we want to play the game. Um, but her ability to be a different striker, to hold, to play with back to goal, to be a connector and link up player with the pace that we knew that we had wide is something that we really wanted in a striker. Um, she ticks so many boxes for us, Tess, like just her, her natural ability to finish, ability to create for others, like in our style of play, as we say, as a, as a striker who's able to play with their back to goal, but then also working behind was really important for us. So um, that was Tess. Rachel, as I spoke about earlier, um, has real ability to to get in behind and her work rate off the ball is incredible as well. Um, and we want people with that energy and that that work rate, but her quality on the ball is is top. And you know, she's she's been around the league. She's she's not found a what be what you say, a long term home. And we want her to mm -hmm. come here and, and find that long term home because we really believe in her as a player and know that she can just bring so much to us. Um and then Alyssa. Alyssa is when we all watched Alyssa, the potential we saw in her to be a top fullback in this league and how we want to play was incredible. I, I spoke about it earlier when I said about players either being wide or having an ability to come inside and, and connect in midfield. And as a fullback, Alyssa has that ability. Um, and it's a, it's a really difficult thing to ask a fullback to do because often it means playing on a weaker foot or coming into areas and spaces that are asking them to go on their weaker foot. And she she has an ability to do that, but her speed, people won't, won't realise how fast Alyssa is at the moment. Um, her speed to get up and down is fantastic. And as I said, something that is important to us when we're looking at fullbacks, we want them to get high. We want them to get high um, and support the attacks. They also need to be able to get back. Um, and she <laughs> has a great engine, a great energy, but she has the capacity to be that real attack-minded fullback and play with quality. And we're seeing a player who's showing this at such a young age with very little, little minutes in NWSL. And when I watch her, I'm blown away by the confidence she shows despite limited game time. Um, so for me, that's somebody who wants the ball, who is capable of managing the ball and is showing that despite not being a regular. That's where I think we saw a really high ceiling with Alyssa to, to play our brand of football and fit in with us. So yeah, we were super happy with everything we did in the expansion draft. Um, Obviously, there there was a trade there as well that then did you know with with Aang it didn't that was a trade um mm -hmm. and that that was all part of the the fun and games on the day with with GMs calling up and trying to do deals last minute so um that one just worked for us because the allocation money is good as well so um yeah there were different pieces and moving pieces on the day but overall we came away really really happy with with every every player that we brought into the club. Excellent. Well, Lucy, I, 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 this is a real quick, give me a, a date or a week a time, real quick. When can we expect our next announcement for a, a, a player? Okay, there's a cheat one, kind of, because we, we have we have agreed with uh, with a free agent. Um, so that one will be coming in probably in the next hopefully in the next week. Um, could be a little bit longer with Christmas and all of that. Um, but the international one, say th those ones can take a little bit more time. So we might need a little bit of patience, but it will be worth the wait is what I'll say. Um, Excellent. Um, All right. Yeah. Well, thanks for leaving us on the edge of our seat. Uh, we will <laughs> we will wait eagerly. Uh, I just want to thank you, Lucy, very much for getting on with the fans and, and myself to have this great discussion. Give us some insight to what the club is thinking, you know, the type of football that we want to not just, you know, I, I think it's about entertainment, but, you know, it's about what our, where our heart is and where our, where, where our minds are and how we want to show up every day. So I think that's fantastic. Again, like I said, we're making history. This is, we have the first chance to make the first impression and we want it to be a good one. So uh, that's very exciting to all the fans that are, that came today. Thanks so much for showing up. Remember, 
remember the holiday season, either your holiday season has just slightly passed, but that doesn't mean you can't give gifts or your holiday season is just about to happen. And wouldn't it be great to get a couple tickets and like a little stocking like that. So please go to our website at wearebayfc or bayfc.com. Right now we're selling season tickets. Single season, uh, si excuse me, single tickets will be sold starting 2024. So that will be coming. You can put an IOU note in one of those stockings as well. Like tickets are on the way. Uh, PayPal Park is a beautiful place to witness uh, football. Every seat is the best seat. So we want you to come and get your butt in a seat and get ready to cheer on the best team in the league. So to all the fans, thank you so much for showing up. To Lucy, thank you very much for this. Happy holidays. I hope that you gift us all some phenomenal players um, for 2024. And I look forward to seeing everybody uh, come this next NWSL season. So thank you so, so much.